Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. In front of me I have a package from Sensorit. So for those of you who don't know, Sensorit is a 3D printing company out of Poland, best known for their desktop selective laser censored nylon 3D printers, which uses powdered nylon and a laser to fuse it together. Now back in 2014, they unveiled their Lisa printer, which was the first version. Uh, and it was a big deal because it was the first company that had a desktop size selective laser censored printer. And then last year, they made major news when they cut the price of that printer in half. And last year, they sent out some sample prints to a bunch of people. Uh, you can click up here to see the prints that came from the original Lisa. Well, Sensorit is back with a second version of their printer they have unveiled the Lisa 2 printer, uh, which makes a bunch of changes, but most importantly has a nitrogen infused print area, uh, which is important because it lets you print with all kinds of different materials that you couldn't do uh, without the nitrogen uh, system inside. So they sent this awesome package over here, uh, filled with a bunch of sample parts. So what do you say? Let's break it open and see what they sent. So this is a very nice wooden box, with a nice hinge, and if I open it up, you can see four different parts that they sent, uh, each showing a different material and a different uh, design philosophy. Now, the most impressive one to me is this. So this is their grasper. It's a functional prototype made from PA12, which is a type of uh, rigid nylon. And you can see that uh, this was all printed well, the grasper itself was printed in one single piece, and then the uh, little claws at the end were each printed separately. And if I were to pull this back, you can see that the spring is actually functional. So this is a fully functional part. And if I were to put my hand in front of it, you can see that the claws actually work. You can see that it kind of grips over the top of my hand here, and that the claws are made out of a flexible material. Uh, now this has just a lot of really neat features. Um, the fact that the claws are designed to be interchangeable, um, so you can see that you can actually make parts that's uh, interlocked with itself. Um, the fact that there's a spring inside that was part of the prints, that is really cool. And this is all made out of uh, nylon, basically nylon powder. A laser shines and melts the nylon, then they put another layer of nylon powder, and then they melt that and they keep building it up with layer by layer. Um, and you can see that it is really smooth. I'll cut in for a, a close up, but it is a really smooth print. You can't even tell that it was 3D printed. Uh, that's, that's really cool. Um, the next one over here is their rubber protective sleeve. Now this is made out of a flexible gray material. You can see that I can actually compress this sleeve um, and it feels really tough, like it's a really durable product. Um, it is really cool to see that you could actually print something uh, that's this flexible yet feels this strong out of this nylon or this uh, powder-based system. Um, also part of their Flexa series is they have their Flexa Black. Um, so this is a flexible tire prototype um, made out of their black flexible material. Uh, and it's very, very flexible, still feels very, very rigid, uh, and you can't tell any kind of print lines or direction there, so that's, that's really cool. Um, and then finally, they have a functional Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus cover. Uh, now this is a full case for a Raspberry Pi uh, that clips together, so it actually has uh, little locking mechanisms over here that you can put in your Raspberry Pi and clip it together. And there we go. You have yourself a case. Now this is, this is all really impressive. Uh, just looking at the prints itself to see that you can have these really complex uh, linkages and springs and all of this from a single print. That is, that is just really, really cool. Uh, now for some of the, the specs about the Lisa 2, um, they've sent really nice little like uh, diagrams and spec sheet here. Um, and this is comparing the original Lisa with the Lisa 2. Uh, the big difference is the print size. Um, you get an extra 110 millimeters of heights from that print bed area. 
and then they have a few different size uh, differences here. Um, the temperature on the inside of the chamber has been increased, so you can actually print with materials that need that higher temperature. Um, and they are in the process of developing a whole bunch of different uh, materials. So the original Lisa, you're really limited to a single type of nylon and a couple of flexible uh, materials. But here they're developing all kinds of different systems, especially because you can use it with this nitrogen flood uh, that just engulfs that build chamber with nitrogen gas which lets you use all kinds of different materials. So it'll be really interesting to see what they develop with this system. Uh, so if you're interested in a desktop nylon printer, um, you can go check them out at sensorit.com. Um, to be fair, it is pretty pricey. It's not designed for a hobbyist, but it's definitely designed for low cost manufacturing. Uh, so I think that they're taking pre-orders right now of the Lisa 2 for about uh, 15,000 US dollars, um, but they're out of Poland, so you'll see prices in euros there. Um, that's compared to the Lisa 2, which is around $6,000, um, and some other competitors, just to give numbers, uh, Form Labs, they have their Fuse 1, which is about $10,000. We also sent over spec sheets for all of the materials that they're showcasing here. Um, I won't you know, go through all of the, the details. You can actually find them on the Sensorit website, but they give uh, full specs, uh, tensile testing, they have compression testing, they have uh, surface roughness and all kinds of specs that you would expect for an engineering, you know, mechanical design uh, point of view. So go check out their website and you can see all of the different material specs. So a really cool thing about their system is that you're not restricted to just their powders. Uh, you can use whatever kind of powder you want. If you want to experiment with different materials or you use another vendor and you want to play around with their powders. Uh, so you can really experiment to your heart's content with this system, which I think is really nice. Being locked down in any system is really restrictive. Uh, so it's great to see that they have opened it up like that. So here's that gripper close up. Uh, you can see that it's really, really smooth. You can't tell of any print lines over here. Uh, even the linkages, the clearances are very nice. Uh, all of those parts just kind of link together perfectly. And that spring on the inside that was printed, you know, in one piece. And when I actually pull this back, you can see that the spring uh, is it just works really, really well. Uh, I am quite impressed with this. Let me show you the claw here so you can see in a little bit more detail how they've designed that and just kind of slides right back into the gripper, which is really nice. And here's that close up of that gripping mechanism. So that's, that's cool. So very nicely done. Um, it feels really smooth in your hands. It feels, I don't know, kind of like marble really. Um, like I said, you can't, can't feel any kind of print lines. It's really, really nicely done. And here's the close-up of that Raspberry Pi case. I really like the Raspberry Pi logo uh, over here in the corner. Um, I haven't yet put in a Raspberry Pi, but I assume that the clearances are, are very nice. Um, and it just feels, it feels really sturdy. This is out of their PA11 nylon, uh, which is a different type of nylon, but it feels, feels very, very rigid actually. I'm trying to bend this and it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty rigid. Um, and you can see that they have really nice kind of structure on the inside to give that kind of rigidity. Uh, so really, really well designed here for this Raspberry Pi case. And since I'm doing close-ups, here's a close-up of that tire with the built-in tread. You can see that it's a pretty, pretty black material, very, very flexible, feels very, very tough pulling it apart. And finally, here is that protective sleeve. Again, uh, looks gray, looks awesome. You can't tell any print lines. And when I'm pulling this apart, it's very, very tough, which is great. So that was a quick overview of the Lisa 2 desktop SLS 3D printer from Sensorit. So if you're interested, go visit their website at sensorit.com. They are still taking reservations for this printer. They're expecting it to start shipping sometime this month. Um, so if you want to pick one up, go put your uh, reservation in and they should start shipping it soon.
So thank you Sensorit for sending me these awesome samples and thank you everyone for watching this video. Please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you think about the Lisa 2 printer and what you would do with a desktop nylon 3D printer. I would love to hear that. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.